You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Jared Mounts. Uh, we got a really good guest back in uh, Bike Back Popular Demand. He is the highest ranked uh, podcast download right now. Uh, I think he's got over... 300 downloads i think on apple and spotify right now so people like the shenandoah river nice travis i'll tell you that's impressive and i had a customer we had a customer in yesterday that was commenting on uh he really liked the podcast and specifically said you know i really like travis yeah and uh and we know we have a ton of river rats Mm -hmm. in this area and i'll tell you too when we when dad first opened the shop it was kind of like there's no big bodies of water here so it's like uh, is there really you know is that going to work type thing? But then you start realizing just between the North Fork and the South Fork of Shando, and then you talk, we'll talk about Potomac, there's enough water right here that guys have grown up fishing. When Ray was Ray was talking about fishing the Shando River, he's going up on 70 years old, and he talked about fishing yeah. it as a kid under the mm-hmm. 50 bridge. So it's not something new. It's something that's always been here, yeah. and people in this area have all grown up fishing this river so your insight yeah is is really awesome um and i'm excited myself too to hear uh what he's got in store for us today yeah. what kind of information and knowledge he can provide for us and it's and when people think northern virginia everyone always thinks i think you know the tidal potomac mm-hmm. it's right there at dc mm-hmm. but you know shannon the shenandoah valley i mean because of i think the growth of western loudon county mm-hmm. it's becoming this weird rustic adventure mm-hmm. place especially for the people that live in fairfax arlington that come out here they want right. they want to drink wine they want to float on the mm-hmm. river and now yeah. I, I i you know correct me if i'm wrong but like how much of your clientele base is really from that dc you know outside the beltway inside the beltway area oh i would say probably at least 75 percent wow wow so yeah you know it's uh some of it's some of it's visiting clients you know to come into the area to enjoy what the shenandoah valley has to offer Mm -hmm. but uh you know they've got an extra day they want to go out and see something different Mm -hmm. and so they'll call me up to you know go run the river and that's why like i kind of try to be as far as a guide um kind of kind of a one-stop guide you know Mm -hmm. so if you show up uh you know you haven't packed your rods and brought them with you Mm -hmm. um you know i'll provide it all you know that's cool so So travis uh you know this weather i i've not seen anything i've seen snowstorms in march and you know march is definitely one of those months that the temperature weather can be just all over the place yeah uh but into now april and then now may Mm -hmm. it's been cold um we've had a really big couple day rain event yes and so i'm very curious uh if 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 you can kind of walk us through the big concern that i have is is the spawn Mm -hmm. and where we're at in the spawn and do you think in your mind uh has this recent rain event will that affect um the spawn so more importantly though we were talking off air just uh maybe walk us through kind of the uh, river mm-hmm. smallmouth yeah. spawn process yeah yeah well um to, to your weather comment mm-hmm. uh for the spring it mm-hmm. has been a wacky weather you know 80 degrees one yep, day yep. snow a few days later yep. so uh and water temps have been really up and down um uh, you know we've we i guess early April, we started getting into where we had temps that were in the, in the Mm fifties. Uh, but it has been really wacky. So smallmouth bass generally spawn right around like the mid fifties. Uh, and that's when they, that's when they, everything starts to get amped up, Hmm. but it's not water temps will fluctuate throughout. So if you've got, you know, a day and it's 65 degrees outside, but nighttime lows are down into the lower forties, uh that water temperature might come up a few Mm -hmm. degrees Mm -hmm. and then overnight it might go down 10 degrees Mm -hmm. so uh but it's not a huge near as uh a fluctuation as what air temperature is right so um it's a little bit you know slower to uh to perform but uh we've definitely um fish have spawned Mm -hmm. but not all of them so uh i guess starting in you know, as far as what I could tell, like mid-April, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we started to get some some spawning. Uh, but we're talking about like spawn is like a month-long event. Okay. Um, you know, and I've even seen fish spawn all the way up into June. Wow. Mm. 
early June. So um, is that because of waves of fish, or is it because of the the, the environmental <laughs> factors as well that, that it's so you know, spread I th out? I think it's waves of fish. You know, I think okay. uh, you know you get them. They they uh, you know some of these fish come back to the same bed each year. Wow. And and, and you know religiously, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that, what I've seen, uh, and so they, it is waves. You know, so you'll get a group that'll spawn. And then you get another group that'll spawn and, um, you know, mm -hmm. it just, so it's like a nice, I mean, it's actually a nice little treat to have, you know, mm -hmm. if you get into that pre-spawn, uh, really cool. wow. you know, where they're really active and, you know, like I said earlier, you know, I've, I've watched, you know, a couple of females swimming with like 15 males around them, you know, just, you know, rubbing on them to try and, you know, mm -hmm. get them to let drop those eggs, you know, on the nest. Um, so, uh, as far as the high water, I mean, this is definitely going to play a factor in the fish that have already spawned. Mm -hmm. So, it, because of the fry, could get you know totally just mm -hmm. done, done for. You know, wash downstream. You know, no more. Um, but we still have fish to spawn. So, mm -hmm. at least from what about my observations? Um, we're, like, we're right now for locals. We're May eighth today, twenty twenty two, and uh, depending on when you watch us, but. Um, and then, so as far as the spawn too, for those who don't know, the males making the bed, correct? Yep. Yep. Um, and where do they like to make that, that bed? They like gravelly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, substructure. Mm -hmm. Uh, they will go in and clean the nest. Like I said earlier, you know, I, I've seen cleaned nests, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know, no fish on them. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and so, I mean, so, um, and they also, from what I understand, uh, Water temp, of course, plays a big factor. It also plays a factor for the eggs okay. mm -hmm. as well. You know, they have to Makes have sense. be in a mm -hmm. maintain a certain temperature. Mm -hmm. They also have to have that, uh, you know, the water kind of moving across them. So okay. if it's too fast, they won't mm. they won't lay their eggs there. Mm. So you're getting into my next question too. Like yeah. current, like how much does the flow rate of the river dictate mm. the spawning? Situation? I mean, it would definitely it would definitely dictate uh, you know the spawn. So you know, with this higher dirty water. Mm -hmm. that we've got going on i mean I, f I feel bad for the uh middle potomac because i mean it's going to get up to um uh, i think like last i saw it was like 17 feet wow that's so crazy. uh which is not good for mm -hmm. any fish that have you know mm -hmm. spawned you know mm -hmm. their fry or eggs are they also looking for like a, a something to kind of as far as when the then the female once she's ready she'll lay those eggs. Mm -hmm. um, so you're talking about water flowing across, but is it not true? Also, they're looking for uh, kind of protection. Uh, yeah. So whether it is maybe a log or, or a rock or something um, that is kind of so they kind of only have to maybe protect them on, on one side. Yeah. Is that true? You, you know, find no, that? I, or no? I don't. I don't no? find that. Okay. What I find, you know, I, I'll um, you know, for example, uh, one of the most recent nests that I saw uh you know as the river comes down you come up onto a couple islands and that nest is right at the head mm -hmm. the upstream side of an island interesting but the water's really you know by then it's not once it hits those Slow bins down. that's when it speeds mm -hmm. up because there's a bit of a drop off gotcha. because part of those islands are built just because it was there's a ledge or something okay. underneath of it you know okay. that catches that makes sense um you know silt and stuff like mm -hmm. that so uh yeah so as far as like you know a something for them to kind of hide behind mm -hmm. now i've not okay. uh, found what there. depth or how picky are they in a river system about the depth in which they spawn in um especially with the bit with the water fluctuating in the springtime as much mm -hmm. um i know in like lakes i heard about this about like uh, chickamauga like, like chickamauga because of the tva system the fish want it to be at a certain level before they spawn when the mm -hmm. water gets up there mm -hmm. and i hear it curve too right um on the river, do, are fish as finicky about the river levels and where they would like to spawn in depth wise, uh, or would they mean, get as shallow as possible? Yeah, if it's if it's it was if it's, I mean that definitely would play a factor into you know, uh, you know where they would build their nests okay. and stuff. Uh, but you know, as far as like sp specific depth, uh, you know, it's definitely more shallower. Okay. Uh, so you know, and that's the problem that we've got right now. You know, the river's you know bumped up. I mean, I think mm. the Shenandoah is going to get up to like seven feet mm -hmm. uh which is not horrible mm -hmm. i mean it's much better than 17 feet sure um and it's not hitting flood stage mm -hmm. um but boy she's dirty and just that coming up will disrupt okay the okay. whole activity uh you know mm -hmm. what's going on in the dirt and dirtying up mm -hmm. of the water you know as well so okay. some have laid then and but the good thing encouraging thing is some have not spawned yet some right. females still have their eggs in them 
And so after this water level comes back down, once those have been, those eggs have been laid, fertilized or whatever, then providing, you know, mother nature's mm -hmm. nice to us. Right. You know, right. we could, we could definitely no have a, you know, a, good um, spawn. a decent, decent spawn, spawn, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And that's, and that's again, something we don't, mm -hmm. uh, biologist kind of taught me that of the mm -hmm. six to seven year data going back and I was yeah. telling people if, yeah. if you get that wrong, uh, flood at the wrong time, uh, and then we, we wouldn't notice it this year. Right. It would be taking it's six, you down know, the road, you yeah, know, that you, you had a good really one notice last it. year and you have a good one next year. Well, let's yeah. say this one's a partial, mm -hmm. uh, but we have a good one next year. You know, yeah. we may not see that in six or seven years, but if you have multiple yeah. year to year back to back, then in year six 2018, or seven from now, we'll, man, we'll be, yes. 2018 was a horrible year, man. Yes. You know, yeah. you probably won't see, at least on the Potomac, you will not probably won't see any of that year class. Right. Exactly. Fish. It really so. shows you, like a double-edged sword, the how fragile a river ecosystem is compared to a lake, Absolutely. and how amazing it is when you have these crazy, crazy mm -hmm. years. Like you think yeah. the New River in its heyday, or the mm -hmm. James is like, or the Susquehanna when it was pumping out. Like mm -hmm. how hard it is to mm -hmm. hit that perfectly, mm -hmm. and what we can do going forward to actually mm -hmm. help. Like you know, guys, like you know, don't throw your trash in there. Try not to gut hook as many fish as possible. Mm -hmm. Put them back in the yeah. water because, like, this is not like some of these lakes that can pump out mm -hmm. massive fish. Like mm -hmm. that fish took a very long time mm -hmm. and beat odds to get as big as they do, as they do. And, and I would like to bring up a point on what you were just saying is when they are when they have spawned and we're in the post spawn, uh, you, you generally try not to fish. Mm -hmm uh the nests mm -hmm. because you you, know, you pull that you know mm -hmm. male off that nest who's protecting those eggs mm -hmm. or those fry and next thing you know you get one of those i mean because everything in the river is predatory in some oh, way correct. and you get that bluegill that'll come in and maybe mm -hmm. steal steal eggs off the nest mm -hmm. uh so you know it's you can't you can't tell somebody not to fish right. at mm -hmm. that time of the year and sometimes you know you 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 catch those fish you might catch that male off that bed because mm -hmm. water's a little cloudy and you, mm -hmm. can't, you can't see the bed. Right. So that, you know, this time of the year, mm -hmm. I'd like to make a real good point that, uh, you know, you catch a fish, you know, mm -hmm. get it back in the water ASAP. Mm -hmm. Try not to float off of the spot if you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, just, you know, mm -hmm. another bass will come in and, right. you know, gobble up and it's so hard if you like because you hear we've had so many guests on and we talk about the eth efficacy of, of fishing during the spawn mm -hmm. and it's just so much harder in this part of the country if you're up north where they literally all spawn for like 30 days mm -hmm. because of how cold it is i think it's a lot more it's easier to say we're going to have a mm -hmm. rule where you can't fish here right here like like you said and it's not just the shenandoah if they're spawning over five months or mm -hmm. like three months mm -hmm. how do you shut a part of the river mm -hmm. down for that long it's it's one thing if we could like say or maybe biologists could help us like yeah this is when the majority spawns right. okay maybe it's more it's easier to shut it well down and i think time. like to his point i think a lot of you know bass a lot of uh late guys you know it's that they they target those beds i think that's what you're saying too mm -hmm. don't target mm -hmm. the bed yeah you see a bed you see a big female Leave on it it. yeah you like to kind of go in there and try to yeah. catch it off a tournament guy if he's you know trying to cast a check but yeah leave it alone maybe fish that deeper water you see that you just yeah. kind of like let them yeah, let them yeah, do their yeah, thing yeah. the other thing about i learned too about smallmouth i did not know uh, when we started stocking up at Lake Holiday, John Reedy did a, a lot of extensive research and, and looked all over the country for um, a hatchery that could bring a smallmouth, and, mm -hmm. and they're few and far between because they say they're so finicky. Yeah. And there, mm -hmm. the other thing that we found, too, why we weren't seeing uh, the reproduction of smallmouth in the same numbers as largemouth is because they don't lay as many eggs. I don't have right. the numbers off the top of really? my head. but I didn't know that. Yeah, largemouth... <laughs> Uh, lays considerably more eggs than the smallmouth, so you right. got to consider that too. That smallmouth is not laying as many eggs, mm -hmm. and so then you talk too about you know the diversity of a river system and then predation on those eggs. And yeah. it, you're right, a fish, a smallmouth that makes it, I mean it, it's it's a oh, it's yeah. a bad bad smallmouth because it's yeah. it's uh, it's beat the odds <laughs> to uh, grow no, up, uh, you know. Yeah. So, but what can the point here too is what can we do as anglers, yeah, to protect that critical time period to make sure that the future of the fishery stays healthy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's, that's like, that should be every angler's Correct. goal, you know, mm -hmm. is to protect mm -hmm. the fishery because, Correct. you know, mm -hmm. you know, we want our kids to be able to fish that's it. Right. right. You know, oh, the next generation and the mm -hmm. next generation after that's that. Right. So we are yeah. stewards mm 
mm-hmm. in our own right of the river. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're the ones that want to take care of it. And this is a conversation we have. And we want to say, you know, thank you to the you know, Department of Virginia Wildlife Resources for all their work they do. But it's not just them, everyone. You know, it yeah. is up to the people that run mm-hmm. businesses that have to do with the river. Uh, you know, the river rafters and all them. Mm-hmm. I, some of those businesses escape me. But like, you mm-hmm. know, making sure that when they have those people float the river, mm-hmm. they're not leaving rubbish. You know, they're taking yeah. care of it. Mm-hmm. It's up to the guides. It's up to the tackle shops. Like, because we all want to have mm-hmm. this resource mm-hmm. around for generations to come. Yeah, right. Right. yeah. We did river cleanup, Shenandoah River cleanup, um, the twenty first mm-hmm. of April. Oh, wow. We were going to do it on the twenty second, which is Earth Day, mm. uh, but that was a Friday. Mm-hmm. So uh, we decided, and you know, some of, some guides had trips and stuff like that. But we met up with Mark Frondor from the Shenandoah River Keepers. Very cool. And, uh, you know, pulled, I think it was like 35 tires out of the river. Wow. Uh, How many guys um, were there? Uh, there were, I think, eight of us. Good for you all. So, wow. you know, and got, got the tires out and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's good. It's a good thing to do. You know? Oh, absolutely. Great. You know, good I'm, for you. Every, every mm-hmm. time I go to a boat ramp and I see garbage, yeah. I pick it up, man. I, I think it's karma, you know, yeah. or, uh, you know, I'm, 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 uh, giving like a sacrifice to the river gods so that I can have uh, <laughs> a good day on the river, <laughs> a good day yeah. on the river, you know, <laughs> no, and that's so important too. And I remember when I was teaching, you know, even hiking, that's a, a big thing with hiking. And, and I had to, you know, explain like that yeah. may not be your trash. That's not your tire, but go ahead and, and yeah. think of mother nature, you know? And it's like, even if it's not yours, pack it out. Yeah. Like put it in a bag, yeah. you know, throw it in your truck, you know, just, it's, it's a, just a good rule of thumb. And if everybody mm-hmm. does that, obviously if, if, people didn't throw their trash out we wouldn't have to worry about it but right sadly uh, don't people not do. pick it up because well, i didn't make that mess it's yeah. not mine yes. you know go ahead and yeah. pick it up and uh that's that's important it's very important mm-hmm. and then I, I guess if you want you want to segue just kind of like just may fishing on the shenandoah river did you want to how would you like to break the river down um did you want to is there a specific part you want to talk about or start from part a and work our way um, down or what's, what's your vibe you know so, I mean, we just want to talk about like, you know, the, you know, uh, the spawn and stuff like that. Or, yeah. I would say finishing up. So you're like, you're saying your, your fish will in the next three weeks or, yeah. or a month, they'll, they'll continue to spawn. And then, um, the seasonal thing. So like, and that's the thing that always gets me is, is, uh, you know, fishing that spawn to post spawn. Mm-hmm. And then that should lead us into a summer pattern. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. And sometimes those transitions can be hard to fish. Yeah. Once you get mm-hmm. into a true summer pattern, you know where they're at. Once yeah, you're in a yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and part, of that, certain... part of that transition too, and to get to like some of those big fish is mm-hmm. the fact that they have got those, those big females. Mm-hmm. It's like, where do they go? Right. Yes. Where do yeah. they go? Exactly. Where so they go? if you can kind of talk to that, like what goes through yeah. your mind when you're searching for, because I think that's a big thing with, it's not always... We're always thinking about what you're going to throw. You're throwing mm-hmm. plastic, you're throwing top water, you're mm-hmm. throwing this. Mm-hmm. And that, although that's important, what I think is even more important is, to your point, where is that fish? It's yeah. almost that if I was a fish, where am I going to be? Yeah. yeah. Where am I going to be based on not just present conditions, but also seasonal type stuff? So maybe mm-hmm. talk a little bit through what goes through your okay. mind as an angler to have success in a uh, spawn, post-spawn into a summer pattern. Yeah. Where, do, where are those fish, in your opinion? Yeah, yeah. So, um, in, into, well, of course we've got pre-spawn, mm-hmm. right? And then after pre-spawn, we're into the spawn, um, which, you know, even when the fish are spawning, I mean, mm-hmm. there's other fish that are in that pre-spawn, Correct. uh, stage, mm-hmm. uh, and like those, you know, like you generally, you start to figure out that those fish coming out of that kind of winter mm-hmm. and getting into that pre-spawn mm-hmm. and stuff like that, uh, with water temperatures, mm-hmm uh you know being in the into the 50s they will move to they'll still stay in that kind of calmer mm-hmm. water all right uh but you'll find them closer mm-hmm. to the current line mm-hmm. in start that calmer up. water yes mm-hmm. moving out deeper moving water up. start moving up how so. much on a river or let's say shandell because i i know mm-hmm. we talked to, to travis about um or chris gorsuch about the susquehanna how far will they travel from let's say winter spot to spawning ground is this a small Good part question. of the river sometimes it's a small you know, small section of river, you know, yeah. they'll move out of those uh, deeper holes, start moving up into a little bit more shallow water. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. And then they move out, you know, move on out and mm-hmm. move, start making their way towards their, you know, spawning points, which could be 
I mean, I'm sure that there's, you know, some of them. I mean, I've heard stories of mm-hmm. smallmouth traveling 17 miles. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, Holy smokes. So, I mean, if that's the case, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's a long way to swim. That's insane. Yeah. Right, right. So. Yeah, just thinking about like a lake where you hear the pros talk about like you can take one big creek arm and let's, let's say like in our cur or whatever. And you can have a fish literally like winter spawn and mm-hmm. summer in, in that small area. Right. Small and you area, think yeah. the Shenandoah where they mm-hmm. could be freaking spawning here and mm-hmm. then 17 and, miles, the yeah. juices. That's an insane amount yeah. of traveling. You know, and I don't know if they if if there are oh, fish yeah. that would go that far. Uh, but Cut I, it in half. It's still long. Yeah, it's still, <laughs> well, I hear yeah, that. Yeah. I hear that. I hear guys and I'm not not as good as a lot of these guys. But I mean, I hear them talk about go from the dam and say Front Royal mm-hmm. and how they'll move from the dam below Riverton. Yeah. run up the north all the way to the other dam and like where they'll they'll see yeah. them kind of move yeah up the river now yeah. so the question then too is like to your point and i think it's probably broken down i've heard biologists say too um it's broken down in percentage let's say a third like you're saying mm-hmm. they're going to move mm-hmm. up to just that next flat that's a good spawning area more might move some may move on yeah. up may move you know, pretty far. It's still impressive. It's, it's still impressive still that impressive. they're doing yeah. it. And how do we know? We don't, unless that thing has a mark on it, that like you tell that black mark or yeah. something about its face, you right. may know that that's that same fish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes maybe it's just, um, you know, you're not getting bit here, so you're thinking they're not here, but you you move and you're getting bit up there. Well, maybe it was just yeah. a bite window. I guess is what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> how do we definitively know? Unless you yeah. put a tracking thing on them, and I know yeah. they've done that too. And, and I know we're getting off topic, but this to me, it's like, it's it's. there's always two parts. It's like, how do you approach it from a technique standpoint? Mm-hmm. And then how do you approach it Correct. from a locational standpoint? Correct. And then you throw in this third factor of most people are either kayaking or floating. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. how, do you, how do you tactically make sure you hit the key spots mm-hmm. without because I, when i was in high school and i floated the river i was guilty mm-hmm. of this you just float for an hour mm-hmm. and you just right. fish everything yeah that's probably not the best way to do it though right. and so when you take out sometimes you know yeah. sometimes it is oh yeah know? yeah i mean because you cover a lot of water so when you're like if you can't quite key in on yeah. them you know you know don't spend a bunch of time fishing, fishing specific yeah. spots mm-hmm. you know just run with it and use baits mm-hmm. that you know like you wouldn't want Cover to use water. a ned rig or a mm-hmm. tube or okay. a jig or something like that if you're just moving mm-hmm. you know for one you're going to get hung up and stuff like that but you know you would not tend to and by then you know like now we're using moving baits mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. uh or, or is you know i mean mm-hmm. you can catch them on a you know you know whatever kind of moving bait you want to throw out there mm-hmm. and bust it back in which goes to show now they're a little bit more active mm-hmm. so you know in the winter time you know we're dredging the bottom mm-hmm. i mean low and slow and then mm-hmm. it starts this progression it starts to pick up you know you start mm-hmm. keying in on that they are moving okay. but you know as far as floating you know and you're not quite sure where they are you know you just kind of you know get a moving bait you know and just keep you know busting it out there as you float along eventually you're going to come into them something yeah and you'll kind of start to unlock those i mean it's a huge puzzle oh yeah, you know? yeah i mean yeah. And, and you know the pieces sometimes fit together and sometimes you know you think it fits together That's the and fun then part, though. It gets yeah. yeah and, and then the next thing puzzle. you know it's like well man all my theories are just yeah. thrown right out the window so one know? thing i heard you say they're pushing out of a wintering hole yeah. and then you're going to move up closer to a bank but be looking specifically for a current line is what yeah, you kind of were talking yeah, about because yeah, so they, they still want to hang out i mean i mean they're uh they're not they're opportunists you right. know and they are mm-hmm. they know that uh, stay out of the current right mm-hmm. now uh when we go out into the current if mm-hmm. i need to eat mm-hmm. uh or to get from point a to point b mm-hmm. uh the rest of it i'm just going to mm-hmm. hang out here you know mm-hmm. so they're using water temperature for like you talk about 50 degrees are you using is that mm-hmm. kind of your gauge like when you go out are you keen on like water temperature i see it in this range yeah so and and i keen on there. water temperature for when i'm going to throw certain baits okay. too that's cool oh uh, you know that that's a that's a mm-hmm. big thing you know um mm-hmm. uh, you know you know winter jerk bait fishing mm-hmm. you know water's got to be right in a certain mm-hmm. certain area you know mm-hmm. for the jerk bait to uh you know produce mm-hmm. if it's too cold uh, they're not gonna bite on mm-hmm. it you know if it's mm-hmm. too if it gets warm well, then you're gonna speed up your tree right. so uh, you know, you know, this time of the year, uh, you know, for spawn and stuff like that, I will pre-spawn and to spawn, uh, you know, we'll throw, uh, tubes okay. a lot because it kind of mimics that crayfish. Mm. And I mean, that's one of the main, that's one of the main mm-hmm. things that smallmouth will eat in mm-hmm. the rivers. Crayfish, we we so. ask every river guy this a gun to your head, Ned rig or tube. Why? Okay. Um, <laughs> at, at different. So mm. Ned rig, I love the Ned rig. 
and it's i mean it is it's stand up and stuff you know i mean everything about the ned rig uh i mean it's it's for lack of a better term man it's it's, it's a sexy finesse bait mm -hmm. and the fish love it mm -hmm. um generally i'm a big ned rig guy really yeah okay. i started out started out with tubes you know but uh you know eventually when that ned rig came out i thought man i'm gonna pick this thing apart see how i can apply it mm -hmm. to the river here and um I mean, I've been been stuck with it mm -hmm. for a long time, mm -hmm. and I've got I've had lots and lots of citation fish brought in on a Ned Rig. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, other anglers who are very you know uh, have been fishing for a long time. You know, I show them the Ned Rig, and they're like, you know, kind of scoff at it, mm -hmm. and, and then they fish it. Mm -hmm. And my good buddy, you know, caught his first uh, Shenandoah citation on a Ned Rig, wow. and he started out that he was. A naysayer to the Ned Rig, mm -hmm. and uh, called it citation for citation. Now, 21 citation inch. twenty plus, yep. twenty plus or four pounds, right? Uh, I think Virginia's five pounds. Oh, is it five pounds? I think, okay. Yeah, last time I looked, Damn West it. Virginia's four pounds. Okay, that's a stubby Lengthen. fish. If it's yeah, under yeah, twenty yeah. inches and five pounds, yeah. yes. No, I love asking people that question because I didn't realize how much of a cult of personality around the tube in this area there is. Oh, yeah. And so I really grew up with like the Ned rig being the mm -hmm. deal, yeah. but there are so many people that will just live and die with it too. Oh, it's yeah. so interesting. Like how much of it is, is there a unique difference or is it just your confidence in said lure? I think it's confidence in said lure, man. You know, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think a lot of stuff, you know, um, and we've all been there before where you're out fishing and you just like, you can't seem to find what they want want to eat mm -hmm. and you're tying on stuff mm -hmm. all yeah. the time and you end up spending more time tying something on than fishing mm -hmm. you know a handful of things thinking that you're going to like finally get into them mm -hmm. and you know by the end of the day you might not have hardly any fish in the boat and I Where, yeah, whereas right. if you stuck with right two three baits and fish those religiously correct eventually they're going to be the right bait and know? i think that key to what you said is the bottom like you're talking about dragging the bottom i think it's how you fish it so whether you yeah. drag that tube on the bottom or you drag a hair jig with a trailer or you drag i mean it could be a rubber jig it can be it, the net it, rig like yeah. if you're dragging it on the bottom because like you said it's true too they're op opportunistic yes mm -hmm. And so they'll, and I don't think they're never going to turn their nose up to a crayfish as right. an example. Like you said, they're going to eat that every day. Now, if that means mm -hmm. it looks, if that tube looks like a crayfish or it's the, the jig with a trailer that looks like a crayfish, yeah. Yeah. they're eating it or the and, mad tom. And smallmouths tend to be, you know, like they're, they're more oriented to mm -hmm. bottom. Correct. Uh, and that's why, you know, you know, if you're fit, if you're not mm -hmm. fishing the bottom, it's gotta be something really shiny or something that makes some noise Correct. to pull their attention mm -hmm. up off the bottom Correct. and say, what is that? What is that? And, yeah. You know, take a swing at it. Right. So. Cause I, especially their bottom feeders and I didn't mean to cut you off. But it's like, I heard this mm -hmm. when they talked about the goby infestation mm -hmm. up at the great lakes where you used to have these, these fish that were very pelagic and would travel around mm -hmm. and, and hunt the elf wives and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now they're very bottom oriented, mm -hmm. which yeah. is they're harder to hit top water because mm -hmm. like you said, they're yeah. so pinned on the ground. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think what they're eating, you got to know mm -hmm. what the forage is. And mm -hmm. like, yeah. it's so crazy to me when you think about it. Like if, if you want to know how to find a hawk, like where are the mice? It's the same thing like, with <laughs> right. smallmouth. Like right. you got to know what they're eating. Right. Yeah. So when you're fishing that tube or, or whatever you're dragging on the bottom, mm -hmm. How are you fishing it when you consider uh, river current and uh, and kind of are you popping it or dragging it or what kind of? How Usually you... it's a lift. Like as far as lift. like a tube. Okay. I mean rod, mm -hmm. forty five degree angle, mm -hmm. uh, and then tight line of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. and just a nice slow easy lift mm -hmm. up and let it down. Let it down. Now yeah. sometimes you know you might change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You might you know pop really it. make it pop you know and hop over the bottom mm -hmm. uh but generally it's just a drag mm -hmm. you know and you could you know I, I can see it you know i know exactly what's going on down there you know and that okay. fish you get those fish coming coming up and okay you know they're like whoa what is that and yeah. you, you're just dragging it they, yeah and know. the current's kind of playing in it too just when you pick it yes. up the current's going to go ahead and you know yeah just, and so in that case down. you know like you know if you're fishing and especially river fishing because the river's not very wide mm -hmm. Um, you know, you kind of hang out in the current mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or come down to the bottom of, of an mm -hmm. eddy and throw up into it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that, you know, your, your nice, stable, easy water, um, 
you know, I mean, I have anchors on my boat, you know, so I could drop them in the current, but mm -hmm. I generally don't do right. that because that's how you lose anchors. Right, right. And um, I've, I've got probably a dozen of them laying out in the river <laughs> in various spots where, right. where I've <laughs> done that. But um, so, yeah, you fish up into it. And so with the current, you know, sometimes you're fishing, your line's in the current. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, an eighth ounce tube hook mm -hmm. uh, is probably going to, washed mm -hmm. out you know mm -hmm. depending on how fast that current is so then you got to bump it mm -hmm. up you know you mm -hmm. go to a quarter you know to try and keep mm -hmm. it in that area correct uh but then sometimes you know even that lighter uh jig can you know play into your mm -hmm. favor because of the fact that you know it might be in there just for a couple minutes mm -hmm. and it might give that more realistic pre presentation mm -hmm. of a crayfish mm -hmm. meandering along correct. the bottom and then all of a sudden you know that crayfish you know, we've all seen it, you know, when you scare them up, yes. phew, you know, they shoot yeah, out. Uh, so, which is, again, why you kind of want to sometimes vary your uh, retrieve on a tube. Yes, and I think you were talking about floating, too, and I think it's important <clears throat> to note, too, like when you start to learn to read the water in that current line and, and or where you think that fish is going to be. And if I think that fish is here, don't always throw right to that fish. Right. Try to get your boat in a position where you're going to throw yeah. above it. Understanding yes. too your depth of your water, yeah. how how much weight you got, because mm -hmm. ultimately if it is on the bottom, you want to get it well enough up so that your natural drift, it'll yes. actually go down in front of it. Yeah. You try that first, but yeah. you, you may need to stay in there and make multiple casts. Start up, maybe get a natural drift mm -hmm. pass. They always you see and always remember in the field and stream articles and stuff taking a say you're talking about an eddy or a rock. And there's five or six different Breaking ambush down, points around yes, that. So yes. you kind of start here and then you might throw here and yeah. then you're going to kind of, but don't knowing too, that it's going to take a while for it to get down to the fish. Trout mm -hmm. fishermen are yeah. you know, famous about that too. So yeah. just taking that area and there might be six different windows that you need to yeah. fish thoroughly to yep. maybe get bit. Yeah. So th I got three questions. Let's start with number one. What is your what is your tackle setup with the baits that you're going to throw um, mm -hmm. this time of year? And honestly, should we just do our, our bait segment now? Yeah, sure. Since we, since we have them out there. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess let's start with that too. Let, let's go with yeah. what baits and how the tackle is. So, so, so this time of the year, um, and I mean, honestly, all year round, uh, the, the tube, uh, you know, I mean, it's a no-brainer. It's been mm -hmm. around for a while, mm -hmm. and boy, it is a fish-catching machine. Uh, it does take a little bit of, you have to learn it mm -hmm. and how to fish it, mm -hmm. you know, you end up donating a bunch to the river, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which, you know, which does happen. Uh, but that's, a, that's just a great, uh, bait period. But, and especially for what size for pre spawn, again? you know, this size I'll use, uh, two, usually two I three usually quarter, or three and a half inch, two uh, and three quarter inch size, I think. Yeah. Like, like, you know, like a, yeah. like a three aught mm -hmm. uh you know hook two to three aught hook mm -hmm. uh eighth ounce mm -hmm. depending on the water depth mm -hmm. and the current mm -hmm. uh i like it light i find that light tends to be able to a little bit uh, you know mm -hmm. pop off of uh you know hang ups a little bit easier mm -hmm. um but yeah so tube and fish you know like relatively slow but mixing it up a little bit mm -hmm. uh you know you're as far as your retrieve um, that brand's a good brand too. Right, oh, it is, man. Good. Right, bite. They're a little cheaper. I love these guys. They're man. good quality. Yeah. They're, yep. Um, they they are just and, a, they're a, they're just a good good bait. Yeah, and they make. I mean, that two and three quarter ounce. Yes. I mean, that's a perfect size, yeah. and that's like even a really great size for like winter fishing. That mm -hmm. smaller profile, mm -hmm. uh, and, right. which is one of the reasons that I like the Ned Rig. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you can fish Ned Rig, you know, this time of year as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I mean, we pull fish in. Mm -hmm. on those braid to leader or straight floor or monofilament you know what do you, I, what do you just like? in in my profession um uh, i use braid 10 pound braid uh eight to eight sometimes maybe a 10 pound leader uh <clears throat> generally uh mono okay uh just because mm -hmm. it's it's strong and cheaper mm -hmm. yes and cheaper <laughs> nick resistant you know more nick resistant hmm. uh you know than a lot of those fluorocarbons um but yeah, that's, and that's like a go-to for me specifically, uh, that I have found, you know, over time just seemed to work better for guiding mm -hmm. and for myself. What, what knot do you like to tie, to, to tie your leaders together? Uni knot. Uni knot. Yeah, okay. Double uni knot, you know, so, uh, is fine. Uh, and it's super fast and easy to tie. So, um, and then no, you know, of course, no, uh. You no know, swivels or anything like that. You know? Oh, okay. I don't use any swivels. What about weed guard? 
Weed Guard, yes. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm a big, huge fan of Weed Guard. Mm -hmm. I'm anything, any kind of. Um, Your job you would know, be so miserable. Oh <laughs> to some man, people, if you could have a Weed but, Guard. But I mean, even those Weed Guards, man. Sometimes they're not. Yeah, they're true. not necessarily rock guards, yeah. you know. And I tell everybody, you know, there's nothing that is truly snagless mm -hmm. in the river, you know. Well, we and there was an Oldham's hook. I'm trying to see, if we had one here. Oldham's made a really good hook that, and there was a way you laid the Weed Guard down and ran it in first, and it uh -huh. popped out. Yeah, and it was it would fold down underneath the hook, and it was yes. a really great yes. hook. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Oldham's mm -hmm. won't sell to uh, right to suppliers, I guess now. So you have to buy direct from them. So I know uh, okay. some guys have been coming in asking for the Oldham hook because it's mm -hmm. yeah. And the first time we ever got that, I can remember a guy was asking about Oldham. We're like, oh okay, yeah. So and he bought like it was like 75 packs of them yeah you know, i'm thinking yeah. man this must yeah. be something and then they really grew in popularity but now it yeah. kind of stinks now because they're coming in looking for them mm -hmm. and we don't have them yeah. so you might have to yeah. go direct to oldham another hook you could try i'll show you after the show is the tro car flipping tube hook mm, yes because mm -hmm. it's a little bit thicker so mm -hmm. if yeah. you want to like use a heavier rod mm -hmm. you can fish it weedless and still mm -hmm. jack yeah, on yeah. them yeah. but how spitball here how uh -huh. much money do you lose in tackle every year as a guy that's got to be insane oh like, man over under i you guess i like to think about it yeah i don't want to know yeah. i think people at home don't understand like so i i people that are non-fishermen friends that, that that are watching this and they're saying like well why does he have to why do guys have to charge this much well like think of it this way if you're fishing a river and i think all most people listening to this show and people here know how snaggy a river is mm. now imagine your life is on the river now imagine yeah. all the amount of hooks and crap yeah, you probably yeah. lost to people because yeah. you probably hope that they're all really good with their stuff but you're yeah. gonna get that one person mm. that'll probably lose you a thousand dollars in one trip my it's, first few months of guiding yeah. of actual you know really yeah. guiding and uh Man, I, there was one day I came off the river, you know, I'm like, man, there's 60 bucks I left yeah. in the river. Yeah. You know? I was like, I've got to change, I've got to mm. change my approach here. You know, what mm. am I going to do? And that's when I was like, soft plastics, you know, soft plastics and hooks. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, whereas, you know, but I mean, I got to say, I love, <laughs> I love throwing, you know, a spinnerbait, mm -hmm. but I mean, you know, that's a $6.30 spinnerbait. Mm-hmm. You don't want to lose too many of those in the river. And the smallmouth are hard on those, yeah. especially a thin mm -hmm. wire. Like they'll, yeah. I mean, they'll, they'll hold up. Yeah. You know, but yeah. they're 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 freight training those things, and it's yeah, uh, no last. I mean, they'll they'll yes. last a period of time, but the, but over time they'll they'll do a number on on, on the spinner baits. Certainly. You know? Oh yeah, man. I mean, I've had to like yeah bend, bend them back, back out, in the yeah. in the shape right. and stuff, which and... is good though. That's a good thing because yeah. they're, like, oh, they're yeah, freight absolutely. training, man. That's a great yeah. bite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Just to give guys like some just. I, for understanding that you don't really think about that, mm -hmm. depending on how much, like if it costs, you know, a dollar to go out and you mm -hmm. lose $10 worth of tackle. Right. Oh, absolutely. And then you don't end up tipping the guy. Like guys think about the, like it is a business for them. Yeah. It's how they make their living. So just un understand mm -hmm. that, like mm -hmm. the whole process. So I guess tube is number one. Then you go number two is spinner bait then on your list. Yeah. Spinner baits. This is a great like mm -hmm. search bait. And, you know, especially out on the river, if you're out there and you've got like multiple eddies running across the river, mm -hmm. I mean, man, you could chuck this thing into one eddy way far over there. Mm. Not to mention you can chuck them a mile and a half, mm. you know, and buzz it back through from one eddy to another, you know. And that current, it's kind of funny because the current will catch right. it and then it'll boom, it'll come into that other eddy, you know, and the line will straighten mm. out, you know. And What size um, weight spinnerbait? And do you like a stinger hook for, for spinnerbaits with smallies? You know, I've not used a stinger hook for really? a wow. spinnerbait. And uh, how's the hookup ratio? Still pretty yeah, good with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a big trailer fan on hmm. a spinner bait. Hmm. Okay. Now I have been known and my buddies call it the Travis special uh, to use that booyah mm -hmm. mini mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. spinner bait. Oh, okay. That's yeah. for like ponds. That's, yeah. that's neat. Okay. And, thro and throw mm -hmm. a swim bait on it as a trailer. Yeah. Oh. And, um, yeah. Yes. So, I mean, well, and, and it makes me the, the beetle spin came up in conversation two yeah. or three times yesterday at the right. shop, you know, and it's uh, that old beetle spin. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up and that's just a small spinner bait mm -hmm. yeah. with a small grub on it. Yep. No skirt. Um, uh, again, can be, and you may, you don't good summertime bait. You don't catch a lot of necessary big ones with it, but if yeah. you have kids and you're floating and want a lot of a good catch rate, yeah, you know, uh, Yes. You know, there's a place for that. But yes. anyway. And especially, yeah. you, you, you know, hit kids. the nail on the head, yeah. kids, you yes. know, because you got to keep them, boys or keep them interested. Yeah. You Panther know? Martins, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Yep. 
but yeah, so spinner bait, uh, like I said, good kind of search bait and then a swim bait, you know, mm -hmm. just straight swim bait. Uh, you generally use a belly hook on it. So mm -hmm. if I use a belly hook with a corkscrew, a lot of mm -hmm. times what I end up doing is trimming the nose off mm -hmm. a little bit so I can get the corkscrew in it mm -hmm. uh, okay. and get mm -hmm. it straight. Um, but you know, just another great. How bait. are you fishing that? Because that can be versatile too. How yeah, you fish that? yeah. So, so you know, with it, you know, generally, especially, I mean, if we're moving, it's just to chuck it and bring mm -hmm. it back. Mm -hmm. uh, you can give that that retrieve a little bit of a variation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, burn it a little bit, pause mm -hmm. it, burn it in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, uh, rod tip lifts mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You mm -hmm. know, you can uh, mix it up with. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, honestly, generally, it's just more of a just for me, straight just retrieval. a straight retrieve, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And especially, uh, you know, for moving, it's a great bait. Mm -hmm. You can just mm -hmm. choo, chuck it over into that, you know, eddy on the side. You know, I've got one mm -hmm. spot on the river, mm -hmm. you know, that I always tell folks. You know, there's like multiple eddies that are. There's still a little bit of current, but it's calm enough, and especially this time of the year, for them to mm -hmm. for the fish to be in there. And you know, we're just gonna. Just kind of, kind of, you know, I mm -hmm. pull down through there, sit out in the current, you know, mm -hmm. back row the boat so it slows us down a little bit. And then they can just jam it out mm -hmm. there into those mm -hmm. eddies, mm -hmm. bring it back in, and they can yeah. hit each, each eddy, one. you know, like two, yeah. three times and really kind of cover, yeah. you know, and that fan cast, yeah. you know, of getting, you know. That's a versatile selection, and, and on the swim bait, you're right. And I, what I found uh, is, like you're talking about tube guys, some guys are so diehard tube, that's all they throw and all they know, and they catch this mm -hmm. fish. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm amazed how, yes, they, they don't either know about the swim bait mm -hmm. or they just haven't fished it a whole lot. Yeah. And so there, that is, and the thing about the swim bait too, that's another one that can be fished. I guess really all of this can be fished year-round except for maybe top water, but you know the the different presentation in the winter time that can be good too mm -hmm. and especially if you're talking about the bottom letting it get to yeah. the bottom and just kind of also working like a jig on the bottom uh -huh. and just because if it's nose down tail up and that you know tail yes. or slow rolling it yeah letting it get done while i'm just kind of slow rolling it along the bottom um you know that can be and then different speeds of retrieval you know mm -hmm. that type of thing so yep. that's that's definitely a good it can also catch you know big fish oh, I, got yeah. a, I got a question then so when when does the spinnerbait bite end is it a from now until the summertime is there a hot time where you transition to another search yeah, lure you know, or... i would generally say like in you know in my experience that uh spinnerbait is generally like a month of may okay in mm -hmm. to the month of june uh you know you can come up with it and you'll eventually start to see if you fish it religiously mm -hmm. enough you start to see like all right well we didn't get quite as many mm -hmm. bites mm -hmm. off the spinnerbait, uh, but you still get bites. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I mean, honestly, I mean, you could probably fish that thing year round. And I've heard of guys even fishing this in the wintertime. Right. Really? Right. Wow. But bouncing it off the bottom. Bottom, yeah. Wow. Not even really swimming it back. And you're right. I was going to say, too, don't like, we're so creatures of habit. So we'll mm -hmm. chuck it and we'll wind it. We'll chuck it and wind And then, but. You know, I often think too. Always out of the fish wanted. Sometimes chuck it and let it go ahead and get to the bottom. Yeah. And then start and widening it. Work on your depth. Your, yeah, your that's column, a big level, thing, man. Yeah. Water column, right? And something you're right. Yeah. You know, slow rolling it. Type yeah. Of and, and that question specifically for the guy that watched my blade fishing video and said it's not working. I'm sorry, I forgot to state that that is for January, not now. So I will start <laughs> adding that for the people that need that, need that asterisk. Because mm -hmm. I know some people will just like, all right, well, I'm just going to then throw this in definitely. Right. It, yeah. It's so weird how people, I, I'm a creature of that habit. Like you said, yeah. like you just lock it yeah. in mm -hmm. and you'll never adapt or change. Yeah. Um, and with that said, like top water season, like when do you, when should people mm. start thinking about keeping that tide on? I feel like it's too early, but I could be completely wrong. Well, you know, I mean, I have caught, okay, okay so my top water experience for May was with, with a fly rod. Ooh, you know, I've got pulled fish out, you know, in early May on top water with fly rod. Mm -hmm. you know, That's gotta be so <laughs> amazing, you know, like, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, but generally like top water, we're talking, uh, for me is June all the way into, mm -hmm. I mean, even early October. It, is there a, so. is there a cue? Is it just based on the month of June or is there some visual cue? Is it temperature, current yeah, flow that I you're mean, looking well, you for? Start, you start, you know, if you spend enough time out there. Mm -hmm. You know, and you see those, you see smallmouth starting to hit, 
you know, hit top water for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, okay. You know, observation, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that that's, you know, a lot of what fishing is, you know, is, is observation. You know, you just kind of, you see things, you tuck it away mm -hmm. back there and that, you know, data center, you know, mm -hmm. that you have in your brain and, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully it comes out, you know, when the time's right mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I remember last year. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha, you know? gotcha. Uh, but yeah, generally June, you know, we'll start throwing some top water. Uh, you get that late evening, you mm -hmm. know, I'm a top mm -hmm. water late evening. Um, you know, I, that's the time that I fancy to throw mm -hmm. it. Not that you can't catch anything off top water, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the rest of the day in the morning or, mm -hmm. you know, stuff. So yeah, like my theory on that always growing up, it's like whenever I start seeing the little water bugs and the bluegill start mm -hmm. coming up, I feel like yeah. that's kind of when, you know, I mean, I mean that's a good, odds. that's a good cue, you know, as to when to start throwing, you know, some top water, you know, not good. Hearing, I'm not crazy. I've been hearing, <laughs> uh, I've been hearing guys speak of the top water bite already so yeah, really and, and yeah. your point and i think what happens too is you know when it's interesting so when you're coming out of that cold water temperature they're looking for warmer water mm -hmm. and that warmer water is going to be shallow and the mm -hmm. rocks will start to get warm and that's it they and kind of move yes. up into those shallows yes. because like you said that's a great that's, point that you just yes. made here about rocks warming up. rocks warming up and then it's not just the bugs so you're you've, you've made a comment about them you know, cornering a, a their bait fish up against a wall, pinning something. So yeah, it's the same con. They'll, they'll, I think, when they get hungry, they're going to go to where the the uh, restaurant is, if mm -hmm. you will. And if those fish, they will push those fish up in the shallows. And and I find like early morning too. Uh -huh. But again, if an overcast overcast day like we have today too, or a little bit of wind on the water, and that's the other thing I like about yeah. spinner bait. Anytime there's some chopper wind, yeah. If you can't see down because of the the wind in the water, they can't see up. They're gonna. They also have better security of going up into those shallows to feed. Mm -hmm. And so yes. when you, if you chuck that any of one of those up there or top water in the shallow, you know you'll get again that opportunistic. Yep. Uh, they'll they'll bust it a buzz bait a buzz bait. Yeah. This time of year too, and I've said before, but the great success with that big uh, booyah, the big uh, with a clacker, big uh -huh. black buzz bait. Yep. Um, it's big, but it's yeah. throw it in there. And then, you know, those three and four pound small mouth. Cause you got to figure too, when they get big, they want to eat big too. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. uh, we're I, I always talking about the plopper. I mean, uh -huh. I mean, it's, uh, you know, don't be afraid. And I think going back to, we are creatures of habit. So yes, there are these little rules of thumb, but don't be afraid yeah. to, to explore ex other options. It, you know, you know? So, yeah, yeah. You know, it looks, it looks like it might try it. You yes. know, cause you never know it might, it might produce. Yeah. And that is a fun bite too out yeah. on the uh, river. Yeah, so. and it's always a good idea, anyways, to like pick a bait, mm -hmm. a new bait, mm -hmm. you know, that you haven't, you're, you're not very, very experienced with, mm -hmm. right? You know, yeah. go That's to YouTube, point. watch mm -hmm. some videos, right. and go out and, and give it a try, and you, you just add more yeah, to your arsenal. Yeah, right. and... Because I, I did that too. It was on Lake One on the River, but it, even a subsurface bait that mm -hmm. you know, I'm like. Hmm. You know, and then same thing. I looked, yeah. I was like, okay. So I went out and tried it. And sure enough, I mean, some of these baits will draw them up too. Yes. Like we talk about how they'll be up feeding, like you're talking about feeding down or if they're up looking up, but there's certain baits too that I don't know if what it triggers in them, but it, yes. it, it brings them to the surface. And that's yeah, what this yeah. one bait in particular was a Mikey junior. Um, and it's just kind of like a wake bait, but it, 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 they talk about it bringing fish up. Yeah. And I don't know what, what it is about it, but, it it does work yeah you know in certain in the right time right yeah, yeah yeah it's like jerk baits in the winter time, yes man. that's right mm -hmm. yeah pull them up off the bottom and mm -hmm. you know they, you know especially when you're i mean and you, you gotta love that you know when you yeah, jerk bait fishing and you yeah. see them yes <laughs> yes interested up, and yeah. it's just yeah. like yeah and that's to me is like what it's so crazy because like so and you guys that follow some of the videos like you know i fish college terms where we always go up north to fish for smallmouth and what's so crazy is like stuff i learned there about like if you want to find them you fish those slashy baits because you might not catch them but you mm -hmm. spot them right yeah. there's so many river rats that it is just the tube or die and it's like yeah, guys yeah. i can just take a bright chartreuse jerk bait even now or a bright fluke i might not catch them yeah. but at least i can find them quicker on the river because right. they're so they're they're such good visual predators right. and they will they will track things down whether they eat it oh, or not absolutely. Mm -hmm. they'll shark it Boy. oh absolutely yeah. that's like say you can't run them too fast either they'll they'll swim they're yep. fast swimmers oh my goodness i was just thinking too so <laughs> the difference between like a tournament guy or on a bass boat and you got 15 rods laying on the deck <laughs> versus yeah. in a in a we talk about kayakers but in your what you're doing 
how many different rods do you have at any one time? And then how much do you do you change out? And um, also, let's add to that. Dates? Could you, for people that didn't watch your original podcast, what are you fishing out of? Yeah, so everyone uh, knows. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a, so I fish out of a 14-foot whitewater raft. It's uh, decked out with an aluminum frame, and I row it. Uh, do you have a small outboard on it? Uh, That's take, why he's so jacked, by the yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I take uh, I take two two uh, two anglers out at a time, and uh, have the ability to do multiple anglers, multiple boats, uh, which is a great time. You know, you get a bunch of crew of guys together, yeah. and you know the camaraderie. Uh, you That's know cool. that everybody has, and the yeah. you know and the smack talking and yeah, stuff as cool. well yeah. <laughs> goes on. Um, you know, but, uh, and then we, you know, we have lunch and, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great time. So as far as, um, and it's great, honestly, it's a great way to see the river because it's nice and quiet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we creep up on, you know, wildlife, wildlife all the time yeah. and creep up on the fish too. So, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, so as far as rods that I, you know, carry how many, uh, you know, I usually carry about six to eight sometimes 10 rods but six mm -hmm. you know that many usually i will have if i'm if i've got a bait that i know is on fire mm -hmm. um i'll tie two rods up hmm. for each customer with okay. that so that if you know if it's a if it's a tube especially you know like a tube in you know tubes case or ned rig mm -hmm. uh you know they get snagged we try to row over and get it sometimes you, it, you're just not going to retrieve it. you have to break off mm -hmm. You know, we break it off, and then bam, they've got another rod re up, mm -hmm. rigged up and ready to go, mm -hmm. uh, right. so that they don't miss a beat. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And uh, because you can't catch them if it's not in the water, right? You know, and if I have if I have to spend time, right, tying something mm -hmm. on for somebody, mm -hmm. and they don't have a rod in their hands, mm -hmm. uh, you know, their odds are mm -hmm. slowly Diminishing. ticking down. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then as far as like switching up stuff, uh, so because I have that many rods on board mm -hmm. i'll have other things tied on that i yeah. that i know you know so for example this time of the year mm -hmm. you know i'll have a a tube or maybe a ned rig tied mm -hmm. on i'll have spinner bait and then i will have mm -hmm. the swim bait tied mm -hmm. on and uh i'll have them fishing what either what either they are ready for mm -hmm. you know because you don't hand somebody you know a, a real you know, beginner, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't, you wouldn't want to hand them a two because they might get, for one, they might get frustrated with mm -hmm. it and, you know, it's getting hung up, you know, we're spending more time ruined to get them all, you know, unstuck, mm -hmm. uh, or breaking them off. So, you know, you hand them something, you know, generally I'll start out, you know, with the new angler, I'll start out with like a swim bait. It's pretty yeah. self-explanatory, chuck right. it out there, right. bring it back in. Right. Uh, and then graduate them on to mm -hmm. other things, you know, as I yeah. kind of like, and I always give them, some point in time i would give them a few mm -hmm. pointers mm -hmm. and sometimes i love doing that you know yeah, because sure. like you know especially like you know I'll, you know so this is how a swim bait works you know and you see that you know eddie over there mm -hmm. you know let's get mm -hmm. a cast in there and i'm like do it like this mm -hmm. retrieve about like this mm -hmm. and then wham that fish <laughs> hits you know mm -hmm. and like the whole boat like it's like <laughs> mm -hmm. all right you know, that's gotta be pretty cool like when yeah, you're able to man. put them on fish and, and say like cast here and then yes. like it's that and then you showed us a picture mm -hmm. earlier of a lady that caught uh caught a real nice yeah, small mouth like that's first, gotta be first her first citation, citation. small you know wow. and that was i mean that's she, gotta she be rewarding did. for you you didn't oh, catch yeah. the fish but uh, you put her on the fish and yeah. she caught the fish but that's gotta be equally yeah satisfying for yes. you yes and then the whole process all the way up mm -hmm. to her hooking the fish realizing that it's a mm -hmm. you know Good sizable fish, fish mm -hmm. you know and then uh the coaching mm -hmm. into it you know i mean it's like you know it's like you know you're getting the fighter ready you know and they're mm -hmm. massaging them and <laughs> no you yeah, know I, slapping them around you yeah. know like all right you know champ you know you know That's go right. in swinging and yeah. stuff and, yeah. and you know telling her you know like all right you know just take take it easy you know yeah. at that point in time we had the anchors down so i'm like yeah. you know watch out for that anchor line right, don't right, let right. that fish get yeah. in that anchor line and you know just kind of coaching her along yeah net ready you mm -hmm. know get it in the boat and did once it come it out of the up, water at all or no i mean as far as a lot of times smallmouth are known for yeah acrobatics yeah. coming yeah, out of the water yeah. but, but you know this one it, didn't well this one didn't mm -hmm. uh it did break the surface mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. usually that's when i'm like all right it's a big fish right you know, right, right. just kind of make you can tell just yeah. kind of break the surface yeah that heavy fish wallow yeah <laughs> man you're like ooh, you know and the big boil in the water and stuff you know it gets you all amped up oh, you know when goodness. you see that and uh 
yeah, she did a, she did a great job awesome. and, you know, netted it, you know, perfect hookup, you know, mm -hmm. hooked in the lip and, uh, you know, pulled the hook out, got a quick measurement, mm -hmm. photos, and then back in she back went, in, you know, yeah. so. That's cool. Yeah. That is such an art form to teach someone to fish and get them to have success. Because I know I'm trying to get, I've been getting my wife into it. And yeah. You know it works, and so you could be like, "Yeah, you got to fish a Ned rig on the bottom, in thirty-two degree water." But it's like, "Well, what could she actually have success with? What can this kid have success mm -hmm. with?" Yeah. And so it's that balancing of like, "I know this works," but mm -hmm. then in your case, like, "But I know they're not going to have success." So yeah. steering them in the right direction. That, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's art. Yeah. Do you do yeah. much wacky wacky worm? Do you do much with wacky? No, no? I don't do okay. much with wacky. Because as when you're saying that, that's one of the first things I think. And that of is, mm -hmm. is a, that is a great. That's a great like just yes, first time um, beginner. First time, yeah, yeah, kind of hard, kind of hard to mess it up yeah you know? yeah i mean i remember taking my my wife first time and uh canoeing on the river and yeah. it became and it also becomes like you're almost like a competition like you know who's catching more fish and keeping track and and i remember hooking one and it coming up and throwing and spitting it and she she looked back and said does that count you know, towards the number and I'm, so what i said was i said well, when you get really good, you can do like a quick release. Like you don't like if it's not a sizable one, you don't want to mess around with yeah, it. You yeah. can just, you know, it'll pop off. So yeah, you know, it still counts. And yeah. So it wasn't five minutes later, she gets one, comes unbuttoned, turns around, she did quick release. You know? like, <laughs> by the way, I'm beating you. Like you have more fish than I did, so, nice. um, which I don't like to admit. But, anyway. <laughs> but it, it comes down to it too, the experience. I mean, yeah, we, yeah. we love catching fish and it's, yeah. it's fun to watch you him even get excited now mm, talking yeah. about it. Um, but yeah, catching is, is really fun. Um, uh, but is. that experience that you get, the camaraderie, like you said before, yeah. yep. uh, that's, that's all. I mean, I have customers, it... you know, that, you know, go out with me. I've, I've had limited conversation with them, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of a phone call or, mm -hmm. uh, email mm -hmm. or text and, you know, they show up in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, we're loading up, heading to the put in mm -hmm. and I'm on the river with them for the next, at least eight hours. Mm -hmm. So. Dang. You know, I get to, we form a bond, you know, and some wow. of those folks, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm so happy, you know, mm -hmm. to, you know, have met them, had the mm -hmm. opportunity, um, mm -hmm. you know, my, the retired Lieutenant General that I right. told you about guy, him. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's 99, maybe a hundred years oh old. My so I just got a text from his son back a week ago with pictures of the general with some stripers wow and so, so i cool. mean he looks good and he's like we'll see you you know we'll see you here in the next month or two his um wow that's what we want i want to we want to see if we can if he'd be willing to video that yeah. trip with him next yeah, time yeah yeah that's for I, I would be yeah. willing to yeah. go out and uh, take a camera and, yes. and capture that because that's incredible yes that's that's yep that's awesome i mean that you know and and i mean oh my gosh i would I hope I can live to be, you know, oh my 90, God. 90, yeah. 100 still years be old, out there and fish, yeah. you know, and still be able to get mm -hmm. out there and go fish. I mean, yeah. So, uh, here's on the river. It made me think too. Um, Adam yeah. is doing a uh, second annual, um, combat veteran. So you must be a combat veteran, mm -hmm. um, tournament. And I believe it's October. We have a sign here posted. You can go on our Instagram page and see, see it also. We're looking for boat captains for that. Uh, it's going out of front row golf course and uh, just a uh, just informal you know tournament there'll be prizes given out for them i don't think the boat captain fishes on this one so one or two uh, veterans mm -hmm. uh, in the boat take them out for you know a couple hours yeah. throughout the day and just you know give them that experience too uh yeah. on the water yeah, so yeah. uh that's good well that's, and it is it's a release you know i oh mean my, it's yes. uh you kind of forget your troubles mm -hmm. yes very therapeutic mm -hmm. you know i mean my my buddy that i fish mm -hmm. with all the time i mean you know, in his words, mm -hmm. I'm his therapist. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah. I mean, like, and my wife, like, so she got to actually, and for you guys that, I'm sorry, the video didn't come out, my GoPro died, but she got to fish a tournament with me mm -hmm. uh, this, nice. this past weekend. And so, and it was not about winning, it was just about getting her out there. And she said, like, you've yeah. never looked so calm before. It's like, yeah. sort of part of it is like, you never have your phone on you. Like, yeah. for better or worse, you either mm -hmm. don't have cell service, you never check it. So that's mm -hmm. honestly, in this day and age, that's probably the only time in mm -hmm. eight hours a lot of people do not mm -hmm. have technology with mm -hmm. them. And you're just yep. a part of the environment. Mm -hmm. And I feel like yeah. that's what, like, hunters deal with, too, where you're just immersed in nature. And Certainly. it's therapeutic yeah. as anything. And yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a better job this year. I've been busy working a lot. But I can remember back in the day, too, being so stressed out by life and just work and everything. And then just in the summertime, I would do a lot of waiting 
mm-hmm. and Oof, and not yeah. have time to do it, but tell myself, you know what, I'm going fishing you and you, just take yeah. my old tennis shoes and rod, one rod, yeah. and a you know just a vest, fishing vest or something, and, and walking into that river like that whole it does it just is a, such a great stress reliever yeah. and just and then that first you know small mouth and that whole experience. It's like all that stress and all that pressure, all that anxiety mm-hmm. just like Goes almost away. washes away with the yep. river. Yep. And it's like you said too, it's not just the fish, it's it's being in that environment in the Shenandoah Valley in the river mm-hmm. with the mountains yeah. and the, the bald eagles or whatever it is. I yeah. mean it's the floor and, and, the I, and you get away from that and we get so busy in life. I just you know, I'm I'm and, slowly getting back yeah. to that now. Yeah. And um and that it's important. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. We'll do that. We'll have a waiting show when mm-hmm. it gets closer to summertime because mm-hmm. yep. I've had kids ask me about it. And mm-hmm. to honest, yeah. it'd be nice to get professional opinions, mm-hmm. like not only where to go, but mm-hmm. like the safety thing of it. Correct. Oh, that's a big thing, like, man. Yeah. Yeah. Safety, safety aspect. Yeah. Though. Like yeah. to wait a river, especially if you're yeah. a kid, you got to like know, like, mm-hmm. okay, this is a little bit, the, the, the flow's mm-hmm. too much here. You mm-hmm. might want to get these shoes. I remember we had fish hawk. I didn't know about velvet on mm-hmm. boots. Like mm-hmm. that's a thing. Like, yeah. like, mm-hmm. like, I think that'd be a fun thing to do in the yeah. future. I mm-hmm. keep smiling too, thinking I remember we had a group from work and uh dave he he knew some areas down in mount jackson Mm -hmm. (laughs) and we were waiting and it was three of us three or four of us and where we from where we parked and we started walking and i'll never forget too like he knew a spot where he wanted to fish and you'd walk a mile or two before you started fishing i can remember the guy we're walking like kind of single file line and like we can see the river and the other guy's like just ready to get in the river. He look, it keeps looking at me like there's a river. Like what are we? Where are we going? What are we waiting for? But you can even do it in groups where mm-hmm. in a in a river too, where you can kind of spread out. You know, mm-hmm. kind of like trout fishing. You can yeah. spread out and still all all enjoy you know that that time. That's that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I would really like to talk about. I guess. For, for people that are new to the area that just moved here or mm-hmm. getting into fishing, how do you break down the sections of the Shenandoah? I'm assuming you have like what the main stem mm-hmm. and then Riverton up. Like how do you, how do you break it down in sections? And then what, what are some broad, broad brush strokes of what you're looking for to, to pick a part of the river? Yeah. Broad, yeah. broad brush strokes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me and for Kingfisher guide services, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's the, you know, a lot of it's the length. You know how long you know how many miles mm-hmm. it is uh you know generally a trip uh six to nine miles long okay uh, wow. six miles mm-hmm. we can really focus on a lot more really working over some spots and i've got times a year that i'll mm-hmm. will want to fish that you know shorter stretch just so i can really work it over uh, mm. but other times you know like on a nine mile stretch you've got to mm. You know, it's kind of mm-hmm. kind of hit and move. You know, right? Well, you got to keep you, moving because you'll yeah, be it'll be dark yeah, before you know. Yeah. And then, believe me, it's I've been <laughs> off the river playing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the dark moon's you know? out. I mean, I can I could like unload my boat with my eyes closed. You know, I know where everything goes. You feel yeah, it around. Yeah, that's right. You know, and stuff. But uh, so as far as like this Shenandoah is concerned, you've got the you know it's the main stem, and then you've got the north and the south forks. Uh, and that, uh, so, I'll, and I'll give you a real ex- quick example too, mm-hmm. with this most recent rain that we had, mm-hmm. um, and I had a trip scheduled that was uh Thursday and I had, we ended up canceling it right. because, mm-hmm. all right, the North Fork with the Madison Nut Mountains mm-hmm. must've just really gotten hit with some rain. Mm-hmm. And so the North Fork came up like five feet. It jumped like two feet like literally in overnight thank you I, i'm going to stop you for a second because yes. i in talking about that i told myself i'm taking thursday off and i'm going to go down tom's brook area and do a yeah. float and i looked at the river gauge and mm-hmm. i'm like oh it'll what? be good it was about three foot three four foot and yeah. i'm like i'm good yeah you know and so I, I went down i take my bike with me because where i'm gonna i'm gonna leave my bike where i get out and i hmm. go up and i'm gonna float down jump on my bike and ride back and yeah. i got to the river and i was like my god it's blown out yeah and with those low water bridges and i told myself i'm like either they didn't update it i felt stupid yeah but i came back but so it did jump it jumped yeah. like that much it did. all right good. It i did. feel a lot better I'm like, <laughs> gosh jared like you, you've grown up doing this like you know what i mean like right. i did my homework like yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. happened you know i didn't think we got that much rain so anyway i'm sorry Go but ahead. yeah so it had jumped up and so like you know i mean you know it's it all flows downstream right. you know That's so right. you know you could see on the next gauge mm. downstream psh, that it was coming up right. and so it came up uh you know we 
canceled mm. uh, or rescheduled that trip. Mm-hmm. And then we get this rain that came on. Mm-hmm. And so, but with that, back to back to the uh, North Fork jumping up, which mm-hmm. affected the main stem, mm-hmm. the South Fork was fine. Interesting. So you can really start to like That's you start right. looking at these gauges and stuff, mm-hmm. and yes, you follow the water pa- the mm-hmm. weather patterns, and you watch mm-hmm. the real time, and you're like, man, you know, yeah, that side mm-hmm. of the mass nut is mm-hmm. getting hit mm-hmm. hit pretty well, you know, hmm. and then it flows over. Where when I did that mm-hmm. segment of uh, hook shots with uh, Joe Cermelli, mm-hmm. what was pumping in all the dirt into the main stem was mm-hmm. a South Fork, so it was gotcha. the what, east side of the mass nut was getting hit with a bunch of rain. Mm-hmm. And so you know, you've got to look at those gauges. You know? I mean, That's that right. is like the big thing. Uh, and to give people perspective too, so when he says North Fork, you're looking Mount Jackson, Woodstock, Tom's yeah, Brook, you know, Strasburg, and then to Front Royal. Yeah. And then South Fork look be looking Bentonville, Bentonville, Luray, uh, Stanley, Front Royal, Stanley, yeah, that kind yeah. of two Front Royal where they're okay. going to meet. Yeah. So geographically. You know, that's that's yeah. kind of some areas you can be looking on a map too. Yeah. What and, and not to get too off route, what is a good flow rate for you to make that decision that we can go here? And is it the flow rate of where you're gonna put in or is it the flow rate above where you're gonna put in that, that well, matters? So like I'll split hairs on on some of the stretches that I float and I'll look at because I float a lot of the main stem mm-hmm. and I'll split split hairs sometimes and I'll look at the North Fork, the South Fork mm-hmm. gauge, so the Strasburg gauge and front royal gauge. And the Millville gauge. Millville, yeah. And sometimes I'll take those numbers and I'll kind of, you know, mm-hmm. I'll, you know, round it out and I'll yeah. figure out, okay, this is, mm-hmm. you know, here, you know, this is should be about the level. Mm-hmm. Uh, but generally, you look upstream at the gauge, correct, uh, to give you the better idea of what your what your flow is. Mm-hmm. So, so now we've it, said before, knowing too that if that gauge, it's going to take from it, and say, uh, say. Deer Rapids to Millville, it's going to take a little while for mm-hmm. Millville to come up. It's it's yeah. rivers flowing north. I guess mm-hmm. what I'm trying to get yes. to, and like yep. you say, all that water coming down out of the mountains. Yeah, you got your rainwater, but then you have all the water, and then you have the river From flowing. The so it's, it's going to you're going to see that yeah. that go. Yeah, yeah. Cedar yeah. Creek shot up way high, right? Uh, with mm-hmm. that rain that right. fell uh, for okay. Thursday, that, Makes that sense. you know kind of messed it up. Thursday, Makes sense. So, yeah. Um, and that's good to know too, because again, it's like I'm sort of sitting here, like, oh, we don't have much rain, you know. It's okay, yeah. but like you say, using those, yes, and an under an understanding of creeks going into the river, coming down off the mountain, yeah. Like yeah. And it's so much easier to check those gauges now. I mean, back in the day when mm-hmm. I first started, you know, running the rivers and the yeah. creeks and stuff, you'd have to get on the phone and call, yeah, call and find out what the <laughs> coot store gauge was mm-hmm. <laughs> to determine what, you know, yeah, you know, okay, if a coot stores at two feet, you know, I should be able to float Cedar Creek, That's you know, cool. or something like That's that. Cool. So. Can you tell based on the gauge, the water clarity or a spitball ballpark? You know, of man, like... I can get an idea, Okay, but really I, eyes mm-hmm. on much better mm-hmm. way to, you know, go about it. Okay. Um, for the sole fact that I have done it before and been like, oh, you know, the rivers only come up like six inches, you know, uh, and you know, you go down there and it was a dirty six inches. I mean, it was like, mm-hmm. All right. you know, the you know, we're looking at you know, cappuccino, uh, mm-hmm. you know, colored water, and and, and uh, it's kind of, I mean, it's mind boggling, you know, at times, you know, to look at things and you know, you look at that gauge. You look at the weather, mm-hmm. you know, I have went and, you know, looked at the North Fork. Uh, there was one August where, back a couple of years ago, where um, the main stem was higher than normal. Hmm. And so, uh, and it was dirty and it was the South Fork, but the North Fork was looking mm-hmm. pretty good. Mm-hmm. And we got some overnight rain mm-hmm. or they got overnight rain somewhere further upstream. Right. And I show up the next morning with my with my client, and the water's just like dirty. Hmm. I mean, just amazing. Yeah, like, interesting. You know, it is a very you know mm-hmm. you you try to you try to figure it out and stuff, but man, nothing nothing's better than you know eyes on right to really give you. An so idea. then, for the people at home, if if I if I Google uh, Shenandoah like flow rate. Mm-hmm. What am I looking for? Because I'm probably because I don't have the experience. It just looks like a bunch of numbers with gibberish. Like, what is a good flow rate? I, what's a bad, yeah. what, what What's a so, flow rate that equals dangerous? I guess. Yeah. So, so you know, usually for me, I I don't use flow rates. A lot of okay. a lot of the guys do use mm-hmm. flow rates. You know, especially like like 
you know, my buddies that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, fish or guide on the new, they use flow rates. I've, you know, the way that I've been doing it was because, uh, you know, this is how I'd learned back in the late eighties, early nineties was, you know, how many feet, Okay. okay. Uh, you know, and so, you know, so, you know, for example, um, and I'll tell you what, I can pull it up right now. And you're exactly right. We had a kayaker in the other day. He was talking about that volume. He was looking at volume and there's different yeah. apps too, but I'm with you. Yes. I kind of look at feet like three to four feet is probably a good, good range. Anything yeah. over, you can still fish. And again, a lot depends too. So your jet boat guys too, will mm-hmm. fish those high waters. They would have right. put on and maybe run up because you can navigate. You can go up in places where you couldn't go on low water. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, there is a, yeah, sweet yeah. spot there yep. too. But yep. So for example, like uh, Millville, the Millville gauge in West Virginia, which is the last gauge Main brand. before it hits to before you before it hits uh, the Potomac there at Harper's Ferry, is currently running at eight point two three. That's up. So. So we'll say like because that I, I, equals out to. Uh, so eight feet's bad. I get that. Look at the river now. That's yeah, not yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you wouldn't want to go out there. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> you'd be you'd you'd be uh, in competition with the trees, you know, and stuff like that floating down the river. Um. Yeah. So yeah. So its flow right now is. is and those sites will also tell you flood stage. Yeah. Yes, Are they will. Look, I'm looking at National Weather Service, the Advanced Hydraulic. Mm-hmm. And, and while you guys are looking that up for the people at home, what websites do you guys typically go to so they can find it? Yeah, I've got the National Weather Service is one that I okay. follow, uh, and its gauges will give you a prediction. Okay. So um, yes, and so if you look, uh, he's exactly right. So you could also just do a general search, just Shenandoah River gauge, and then Strasburg, okay. Shenandoah River gauge, Millville. Yeah. And then it'll pull up. I'm I'm with him on and that it'll, national. Weather. It'll probably pull up both the USGS and the and the national weather gauge. Okay. On the left side, you're looking on the graph. You're looking at stage and feet. And that's so when he says three and four. That's what you're looking at. Yeah. At the top and the bottom, you're looking at date and time. Um, a peak, you know, and then like he says, so Sunday right now at 12 p.m. at Strasburg, we're at eight five, but we're coming down. It's already peaked, so. Yeah, so with the river being at, you know, eight point three, that's like uh, that's like eighteen thousand cfs. Mm-hmm. So it's cooking. Yeah, it's you cooking. Know, it's moving. Um, you know, a nine mile trip would be real short in that. <laughs> I so, in that water. Like we know, so I guess eight feet, and like you guys probably do the research at home about like what's dangerous. But like mm-hmm. my brain goes like talking to people about the TVA system, about the current and how it affects mm-hmm. positioning. At all, can you look at your phone the day before a trip, and does that give you a picture of how the fish are going to set up in the river, or does that matter as much if there is a, I don't know, a certain difference in the current speed? Um, yeah, I mean it'll 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 matter okay. as to where they're at, you know, in the river. Uh, but you know, generally what happens like when the water goes up, like if we wanted to go out right now, the three of us, I could take it to some spots and we'd catch some fish. Really, yes. love it. But we, we we wouldn't have to. We wouldn't even need, really need a boat. <laughs> you know, we could just walk to it, you know, really? and, and bank fish. Okay. Um, so, um, but you know, the, so we watch, I do have a bit of an idea, you know, so I know like certain mm-hmm. sections, you know, if, if it's mm-hmm. running four feet, uh, and you know, some of this is, it kind of also pertains to, can I get that 14 foot whitewater raft? Mm hmm through that ledge yeah uh oh, you know okay. so, so summertime sh- things too yeah yeah, yeah. summertime okay. things as well you know and and uh you know where are they you know kind of where they're going to be you know of course you know if it's you know one one day i go out and you know we'll just use a, a random number it's running at three feet uh i go out a few days later and it's come up a foot uh you know i know the water's probably gonna be a little bit on on the dirtier mm-hmm. side okay uh with stuff floating down through it and then also i know that well that rock that was mm-hmm. there that created an eddy for one won't be visible now you know mm-hmm. because you know the water's up and over it but you can but you know after you've learned a section of river for a while you know i mean you just mm-hmm. kind of know where everything is um but you'll see the telltale signs of the water you know that little kind of funky you know water mm-hmm. uh you know ripple to the water and you know like i that's where that rock was you know mm-hmm. so even with that you know 
you know, you still might not find the fish in that exact same mm-hmm. spot, but you know, it, it's, it's, uh, that's interesting. And that, and that is a good point too, because general rule of thumb, water comes up and it's, it's high, like it's running. They're going to be noses to the bank. I mean, literally yes. like looking at the bank because yeah. current won't be a swift up tight to the bank. And right. sometimes as that water gets up on that bank, it'll wash stuff in ants and different things mm-hmm. into the water. So that's another, you know, feeding thing. So that is yeah. a good point I hadn't thought about too. Of, of generally just, in the same, you know, adding to, to that generally, so mm-hmm. if you've got that outside mm-hmm. bend, right, the current's a little bit slower Correct. than it is on that mm-hmm. inside bend, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, you know, in, in thinking of it, you know, you know, where do the bait fish go? Right. You know, if you can find the bait fish, yeah. you'll find because they're not going to fight. Fish. Like he said before, they're not going to fight a current. Like right. you'd be like getting on a treadmill. Like you're not going to, yeah. yeah. You know, so um, unless they're able to sit behind a ledge or a rock. Um, but now I want to say real quick too, again, if you're young, like just also remember, be careful because, um, last thing you want to do is slip off into, you know, heavy current. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so just don't, we're not recommend kids or young people. And the kayakers without experience too. Yeah. To, oh yeah. yeah. You, it's, yeah. you got to respect that river. Each, every I mean, year, you know, I mean, there's something, yes. something happens out on the river Correct. from somewhere somebody did yeah. not consult the gauge. Correct. Uh, um, think worst case scenario, like it's, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, safety. Good yes. stuff. Safety, yeah. man. Yeah, no, definitely. Re- really good stuff. You want, want to catch fish, you want to have fun, but you got to... If and, it, yep. and same thing like you were saying, waiting, just, you know, if, if you've never done it, don't go out with waders on in the river. Mm-hmm. Uh, deep holes, yeah. rocks, current is current. Like you were talking before, too, is when it converges, if it's going, hitting rocks and coming in, that current, I've tried to cross, you know, these these in rapids and mm-hmm. you can't you'll be swept off your feet oh, oh yeah. i'm talking oh, that's yeah. how sweet and it doesn't yeah. look like you it's not a depth thing it might yeah. only be waist deep it and could be you're not deep and, deep and, and, and not you take down. that one step in that current yeah. mm-hmm. force of the current you know so just you know be careful um yep. be very careful you know what you're doing and just be don't, don't be a hero you know mm-hmm. just just yeah. just if if it doesn't feel safe it's probably Correct. not so just <laughs> right. just you can live to yeah. fight another day that's right. go somewhere else yeah. um <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll tell you a little story yeah. here real quick. Go for it. Mm-hmm. So I guess I guess it was probably two or three weeks ago. So water water temps are like in the uh, you know sixties right now, mm-hmm. uh, but they still you know probably will with this higher water and stuff like that. You know they'll probably dip down a little bit cooler. I watched. I came off the river, watched somebody blowing up a couple blowing up some mm-hmm. stand up paddle boards mm-hmm. and it was three o'clock in the afternoon and they're oh. like at the beginning of a nine mile stretch oh my gosh and i said you guys do realize that it's like nine miles and they were dressed it was a warm day i mean it, it was one of those days that it was mid 70s and uh you know i mean i was sweating you know coming off the river and you know they're dressed up like you know they're at the beach yes yeah. yes the mm-hmm. bathing suits on and stuff and uh I was like, you do realize it's nine miles down, right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to the takeout, and they were like, the you could see the the wife or the girlfriend mm-hmm. look, look at uh, mm-hmm. uh, the guy and, and you know had had mm-hmm. this look of shock, and uh, they still went. That's crazy. How could you? So I'll, I'll ask this question with my own story. So when I started dating my wife, I said we're going to go on a float trip, and mm-hmm. she's like, cool, where we're going to go. And I looked at maps, like you know what, we're going to try it. We're going to kayak from fifty to seven. Like I thought it shouldn't be too bad. Long we should trip. do that. I thought we could do it in four the, hours. The so, infamous 50 so, to 7 stretch. So right? yeah. Uh, so we started at noon. Cut to. Started at noon. We, I think we got to Watermelon Park. I think it was 10 o'clock at night. She's crying. Oh my gosh. We didn't make it to 7. And we had to Uber to the car <laughs> to get great. the truck to go back. So long story short, how do you gauge how I'm long it actually takes you? With you? It's impressive because I thought <laughs> like, that was going to be the deal breaker. We didn't bring clothes. It got cold as shit out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I felt that paddleboard story. Like, yep. yeah. But again, like looking at a mouse, like, oh, we'll just, well, it goes to the flow rate. Bad. If you think about what it takes to drive. Yeah. yeah. And now with, it used to be, I remember too, laying, um, we used to teach lay a string uh-huh. on her because the river is also not a straight line oh yeah. right so it's I love you lay that. Your lay a string. string and that is that and jared that's mm. like one of the biggest things on some of those stretches that i find is that somebody has not looked Done at their homework yeah and figured out how far it is from now, point a to point b and yes or their husband you know told yes. them you know like 
oh, it's only three hours. Yeah. And it's and like, you're only moving what though? What, two hour. or three mile an hour. I mean, you're not moving fast. Now I'm going to give yeah. another story though too. So even I, with knowing this, growing up on the river and having spent mm-hmm. time floating and know, I can remember you know searching for new water. So for example, we would go from Rhodes Bridge down to Deer Rapids, and then we bought mm-hmm. a lot. And so I'd done a lot of that. So I, well, you know, yeah. I want to go down and get out at Rhodes. You know? So bit, I, yeah. I looked at the map, topo map, and I, I got it figured out. And there's some low water bridges. I didn't go clear down to Woodstock, but I figured out what would be appropriate, right? Mm-hmm. So we get, we're all excited, Dave and I. We get everything loaded up, and we're on the road. And I can remember we're driving down Route 7. And you didn't, and at that time, too, you didn't have GPSs. And so yeah. I'm just going off of, and I wrote down, you know, left on 728 or whatever. The, and... And so, and I remember for whatever reason, I, I made a wrong turn or bypassed the road I should have gone down and I ended up a bridge down further. Okay. Oh, so, God. but I thought, you know, you're excited about fishing and this yeah. is like six, six thirty in the morning. And I'm like, let's just get on the river. Like yeah. it'll be fine. Right. Yeah. Same sort. But the problem with fishing too is when you fish, if yes, you're a fisherman, that's the issue. you're talking about anchor. Yeah. You're like, you you're stopped. catching them or that good rapid <laughs> yeah, and you're going to spend 45 minutes or an hour uh-huh. you know in that hole and okay let's keep moving yep and so combination of those two things but i'll never forget like i came around a bend and we're and we're getting tired like we're about ready to get off and it's late and i can remember and you hardly ever see anybody on that section yeah and a gentleman was up there mowing his grass i said excuse me sir i said can you tell me how far to road bridge and he says who and I thought we're in trouble because everybody knows everybody down there too. And I'm like, we're in trouble, Dave. Yeah, right. And so to your point, it kept going. It was another one of those things where it's dark and we're getting out. Yeah. And I was worried at that time he was locking, he was chaining his bridge oh, gosh. Uh, because oh, he was having yeah, theft yeah, on yeah, that yeah. side. He, he owned the property on the right side. Yeah. It was a low water bridge. Yeah. So I remember calling him and said, Mr. Rhodes, you know, we're running a little late, you know, just if you can dummy lock that thing, just need to get the trucks out, you know, the truck out. Yeah. So anyway, can I, but I'll never forget too. We get out and, we're going up the road and he calls his girlfriend and I hear him saying, so it's like, you're saying it's dark. It's nine 30. I know, honey, I know it's been dark for an hour. I, I know this doesn't sound, but we, we literally just got off the river. And she's thinking like, yeah, right. Whatever. Like, where are you at? Like, and I just still oh laugh about that. But so even saying yeah. like, do your homework, like you said, good stuff too. It, yeah. It's, yeah. You have so many people like the paddle boarders. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure that's not, you know, Diane and Carl has grown up here the right. whole time. Yeah. There are people that are coming into town. They probably bought them at yeah. sporting mm-hmm. goods. Yeah, the, oh, and, these and, paddle boards were brand new. Now yeah. I will say they they had quality paddle boards. Oh they yeah, were, but they still were made by boat. Mm-hmm. If yeah. you're familiar, have yeah. you seen the boat commercials, yeah, nice. man? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, all right, yeah. yeah. But they weren't dirty, you know. Yeah, but I like <laughs> that. So the string, in them. that's yeah, good. That's a really neat way. On. So string on a yeah. map, to kind of mm-hmm. dictate it. Yep. I mean, is there like give a formula? Like it usually takes like an hour per mile. Well, like, you can also like I know Virginia Department. Well, they've changed their name. Wildlife Resources now. They also have some pretty good uh, resources. Put in resources. Yeah. Okay, like, good. You can yeah. Where to fish on there? Yes, and I think we even have it on our Jake's Bait and Tackle website too. So mm-hmm. um, tells you where tells the you where you put in here, put in here, what you can your average five or six hour trip. Okay. kind of what to um, expect yeah. and stuff you know mm-hmm. as far as the the stretches you know mm-hmm. like what you'll catch okay and we'll, like we'll link that in the episode description because i know there's a lot of people and and hopefully this is like an ongoing mm-hmm. segment we do monthly but especially mm-hmm. the closer we get to summer and people sure. will just be floating and stuff yeah. it's for them because yeah. i know i think mm-hmm. we all have a story of of getting on the river and yeah, not sure. respecting the distances there yeah I mean, it's i'll tell you another nuts. quick story <laughs> yeah. that um don't take too much time but yeah. another story though another don't do this like <laughs> Mm-hmm. Dad and I were on segment. a trip of on the main brand, like um oh shoot, it was a bottom. Uh we had permission to put in that um it'll come to me. And we got out at, at um Locks Landing. Warren's bottom. Warren's bottom. Mm-hmm. We had permission there at Warren's bottom. And so we put in, we have a two vehicles. That's the other thing a lot of people don't realize too. Two vehicles. That's helpful. You know, put in, take out. And yep. so we do this flow, we get clear down to the mill just short of the the landing Mm -hmm. and it dawns on me my keys to the takeout truck are still in the thing (laughs) yes i'm like whoa you know so i'm like uh dad we're gonna have to so we go over to the bank (laughs) i've had that happen i catch the road (laughs) and i start walking back and it's it's several miles it's not too bad but it's also real down i'm walking down this gravel road and you're thinking oh somebody's gonna come along you know 45 minutes the first car comes along but there's already six people in it like that's not gonna work so i keep walking Went up over a hill and uh, I walked down. And there's this huge dog up on the porch, and, yeah. woo, 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 and I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Holy crap! Runs up to the fence, and I'm like, 
I'm looking where I'm going to run because it's coming. Like, and it yes. doesn't, it means business. Yeah, and, right. and there's bulls in this field to my right. This is a true story. <laughs> bulls over here. And I'm like, well, I'm going to take my chances over here. But the dog runs up to the fence, white picket fence or white, not picket, but yeah. board fence. And it, it lays a paw over like one of the boards that's laying down like this. And I'm uh-huh. just like, you know, and <laughs> so it sure enough comes across. I jump in that other fence and I eventually made it back. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just, it's one of those things yeah. where I'm looking later, I'm thinking, way to go yeah. Jared like right. make sure you have the keys <laughs> make sure you have the keys the little little yeah. details it, make it, a difference it happened to me I wasn't I wasn't the one that left keys in the okay. vehicle uh, but yeah it was like yeah. we get to the takeout you know and it's like, like alright oh, where's the keys you know yeah. like oh I left them in your car and it's like Right. Yeah. Makes for a good story, but yeah. at oh, the no, time, but, it's yeah. not yeah. a lot of fun. You're no, like, I mean, you know, okay. Yeah. So, so hell it. So, yeah, when I was 18, we decided to do one more trip before we all went to college. And so, we're, we're, we're kids. We're, we're pretty stupid. And so, we were trying to put in, we we're going to actually camp. We're going to float and camp. And so, we're going to leave about noon, cut to, it's about four, then it's five, then it's six. But we we're still like, hell, we're going to do this. We had three Dick Sporting Goods kayaks. And so we put trash bags with the tent and everything in one, guys. Mm. And this is also something, guys. Always separate all the stuff out so each person has a little bit of everything. What we Good did point. is kayak one is food. Kayak kayak two is clothing and apparel. Kayak three was like water and the drinks and stuff. I already know where this is so going. So we cut to, it is 8 o'clock at night, and we get dropped off just above Harper's Ferry. Because we decided, because we didn't know how to read maps, we're going to float from Harper's Ferry down through Brunswick to do this. So we get on the water. It's nine o'clock at night. We can barely see. And what's nice yeah. is all three of us have a lantern. The lanterns are going to come important to the story because as we yeah. launch, we realize you can't see. It's dark. And so we're actually navigating and it's a new moon. So we're navigating by just hearing the water uh-huh. and watching the lanterns. Yeah. Lantern one goes. So he flips. And oh, so he uh-huh. loses the lantern. And the fun part is that's our clothing. And so uh-huh. we had to not only do we worry about him or the trash bag of our apparel floating down the river. So we decide that, you know, he's he's trying to join the Navy, so he's fine. He'll probably swim. We need the clothes. <laughs> so we just, we don't worry about him at first. So kayak two goes after that stuff. I'm in kayak three. I have all the beverages and stuff. So I decide that based on what I hear, that doesn't sound good. We're going to go wrap around this way because the water sounds not as bad this way. I was right, except there was no water. And so I got stuck and I had to start dragging it. The kayak two that was chasing after it, he, he figured out that there was actually a waterfall. So he yeeted down over that thing, and then there goes all of our food. So cut to, we get to the first island. We're all soaking wet. Kayak one, he actually flipped, and his belt got hooked. His pants got hooked, and the current was heavy enough, it tore his pants off. Oh, my God. Wow. So we get, we get to the first island soaking wet. He's naked. We're walking up the hill. And so we had to wrap him in the plastic tarp that we were going to sit the tent on. And we just sat on the side of this thing, freezing all night. The moral of the story is, first, have a plan. Make sure your girlfriends or your family knows what the hell you're doing. That's a big one. And understand the river, what time it is, and what you're going to get into when you go do this. Luckily, no one died, but it was was a thing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you got to do the research. You you got to do the research. And you got to... Anytime you're out on the water, you've got to, to, you, you need to figure in that at some point in time, you may have to self rescue yourself. That's right. That's, yeah. Yeah. You know, mm. and, you know, different scenarios. How would you get out of, mm. you know, a scenario? You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm, you know, how are you going to remove that mm-hmm. hook? You know that you got that you just hooked yourself with. You know? I don't think people know about that too. The hook, the and hook that, that's yeah. a great thing to go over. You know, is is proper hook mm-hmm. removal. Yeah. Um, I ended up with this past last summer. Uh, mm-hmm. I I did five to six days straight from the middle of May mm-hmm. till uh, the middle of July. Wow. And my mom, who I don't tell her anything about half of what I do. You know, just mm-hmm. because she's a worry ward. That's you funny. know, she's like you know, any other mom. Mm-hmm. And she says, she kept telling me, I, I was telling her how exhausted I was. And she said, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. Oh, there you go. So I was like, yeah, sure, mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got a couple more trips I got to do, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm out. I had a whopper plopper sitting up on the deck. Mm-hmm. I'm like, where I this is going? I pulled the anchor hooks, mm-hmm. the, the anchor lines, popped the anchors, Anchor rope flops over, hits that whopper plopper, gets snagged, 
and I'm running the anchor ropes through my hands, and that whopper plopper goes into my pinky, and I'm like, I'm like, oh no, and like, you know, it, it goes up, and I'm kind of fighting with it. Needless to say, the whopper plopper hook broke off in my pinky. Mm, those oh, are big hooks. Yeah, mm. yeah, they're very big hooks. And so I've got this little nub of uh, of sticking out, you know, and it was way too deep for me to do the hook removal yeah. technique. And so, you know, I you know, kind of, mm. yeah, you know, worked on it a little bit, trying to get it out. It wasn't going to come out. And uh, my customer, I have customers, you know, and my customer behind me says, you know, what are you doing? You know, and I'm like, I'm trying to get the hook out of my pinky. And he's like, oh, the trip is over. And I was like, I was like, he's like, you can just motor us on out. And I was like, no. No, it's no no big deal. You know, I can't motor because of the level that we were at, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And so I, you know, it was, water was a little bit lower. And so I was like, nope. I was like, you know, I'm just going to kind of make our way to the boat ramp and you guys continue to fish. Mm -hmm. And um, so they did. And we got down to a point where, uh, you know, generally the fishing isn't very good because it's mm -hmm. at the top uh, above the boat ramp and gets beat up a lot, you know, by, you know, the rest of the public. And so... Mm -hmm. That's when I fired the motor up and motored us on down and packed everything up and drove to the emergency room. And wow. within, you know, mm -hmm. anyway, I was luckily when I showed up to the emergency room, there was no other. I, I was the only, only person. person there. <laughs> oh. Hey, and uh, hats off to it is Mother's Day. So yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Happy Mother's yeah. Day. Yeah. Thanks yeah. to Happy your mom Mother's for letting Day. you come out and, uh, <laughs> and share Indeed. with us. And uh, <laughs> it made me think, too, though. So when you're talking about any experience, if there's if you are thinking about waiting, you're thinking about doing a trip, kayak trip, you know, whatever, don't hesitate to, to reach out to Fishing the DMV here at Jake's, yeah. you know, and find a mentor or somebody. We can hook you up with somebody or help you yeah. so that you can go out and enjoy that experience. And then, Travis, with that said, too, where can people find you if they want to book a trip or they do yeah. have questions about the river or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can go to uh, www.wegofish.com. Uh, my longer domain name is kfguideservices.com, but usually people mm -hmm. don't can't remember mm -hmm. that and they mm -hmm. spell it wrong and stuff. Mm -hmm. So wegofish.com. Um, you can... Find me there. You can mm -hmm. find me on Instagram, Kingfisher Guide Services. Mm -hmm. You can find me on uh, Facebook as well as Kingfisher Guide Services. Very good. And reach out to me. Phone number's there. Mm -hmm. uh, email uh, address is there. Reach mm -hmm. out to me, and uh, you know I'll, I'll give you the uh, as much information as I deem fitting. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna we'll say give it all to yeah, you. Yeah, no, that's good. And I'm gonna but, say too, if you uh, book a trip with Travis and. Say that you heard about him on Fishing the DMV. Mm -hmm. well, Jason's yeah. going to throw Let in a little care know. package. We're going to throw in some baits okay. uh, that, to give away. So, uh, nice. you know, just a uh, great, great guy here. Mm. You know, knows a lot about the Shenandoah River, spends a lot of time on it. And yep. again, I'm just thankful he comes in and yeah, shares no, what he awesome. knows. So, uh, when you were talking about, you know, uh, wanting to get back mm -hmm. in to go out and wade yes, and yes. stuff like that, you know, if I go, if I go a week without being out on the river, you know, I start getting the itches and stuff like that. I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta, you know, like, I, you know, I, and I check these river gauges like every day, even if I'm gonna, be, whether I'm on the river or not. And, you know, I just get, uh, you know, amped up to, well, you know what I they say, go, man, seven days, think about this, seven days without fishing uh -huh. makes one week. I know, right? <laughs> one week. That's, that's a Bible -E verse there. <laughs> True story. Uh, guys, <laughs> like and subscribe to him. Link to all of his socials will be in the episode description of this episode. Uh, please, if you're in the Winchester area or you know you want to get away from your wife or your loved ones for the weekend, head mm -hmm. out to Jake's Bait and Chapter located in Winchester, Virginia. Get out there with Travis Eden and please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and the podcast. We are now the officially the fastest growing outdoor uh, radio show in the greater D.C. metropolitan area. And we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens, and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.